Welcome to your first look here at Racer X, brought to you by 60 Helmets. Into the stretch run of Lucas Oil Pro Motocross for 2022. I'm Jason Wygant. This is Bud's Creek, Maryland. And what a dynamic championship chase we have coming your way. One point between Chase Sexton and Eli Tomac for a 450 title. And Jet Lawrence in the 250 class continues to lead the way, but he's coming off his first really bad race riding-wise of the year. So a lot to preview here from Bud's track. The riders have really come to love over the years. And uh, somewhat under new management, Jonathan Beasley owned and operated this track forever. He has handed the keys over to his son, Ezra. Yes, named after the great Ezra Lusk. Uh, he is so tall he could be standing at the bottom of this hill. And could be eye to eye with me right now. And Ezra's taking a lot of pride in the chocolate cake dirt of this track at some of the local races. They're really excited to make it bigger and better than ever here at Bud's Creek. So we are excited. And I mentioned that historically close championship chase. I'm going to bring my statistician, my ace reporter. He's got the legal pad. He's got the fanny pack. And he's got his camera, Mitch Kendra, my right-hand man on my left side. Uh, with racerxonline.com. So one point between Sexton and Tomac, you did some research, you even wrote it down, which is more than I would do. We do not see championships this close toward the end very often. Yeah, so since 2005, that's when the data that I look back to, since after, after the first round since 2005, that's 18 years. We didn't count 2020 because there's only nine rounds that year, shortened because of COVID, but since then there's only been three years where the points between first and second after nine rounds has been under double digits, and that was uh, this year was one point. Yep. There was a year that was seven points, and then in 2007, it was tied between Tim Ferry and Andrew Short with zero points. So that's kind of like those are the three close championships. But of all those years, this year is the first where first and second both are over 400 points. So that tells you how they finished first and second so many times. Like Sexton still hasn't finished outside first or second aside from one moto of the 18 races. So they've just been back and forth the whole time. And like I said, the stats are backing that up. Yeah, so that's it. This is the first time we've ever had two guys with more than 400 points at this stage of the season, which just, that's a number on the level that these guys have gone to. We've had multiple times this year where whoever was second in points had the most points someone not in the points lead have ever had. But here's the surprising thing. I think when Eli Tomac got on that run and won eight motos in a row, it just seemed inevitable that he was going to just start pulling away. Chase Sexton has done what no one can do. He is in the races and in the point standings, ripped it away from Eli Tomac. So that's the big surprise. Can Tomac get it back? Because right now Sexton has done something no one does. He got Tomac on his back foot. Yeah, and maybe like everybody says, maybe Eden Dilla doesn't fit Tomac's. Maybe it's not his favorite track. Yeah. He doesn't love the style. But really, no matter what track it is, you just don't catch Tomac physically yeah. in a race. Like you're saying, like what if he was like eight seconds down or six seconds down or something like that and ended up gapping him by like 15 seconds. That just, that doesn't happen. Like, like you yeah. said, he's physically ripped the point standings away from them. They're still close, so he really... We might see a shuffle of the first moto, and then it could switch the end of the second moto by the end of the day. But, yeah, they've just been one, two, back and forth. And Jason Anderson's having the best season pro motocross-wise of his year off, off of a strong Supercross season. And he's riding great, and they're leaving him yeah. in the dust. So it's like they've just, they've just raised the level so much this year. It's incredible. Yep. So that makes this a pivotal round. Hard to believe we're at the point where Tomac has to respond. If Sexton throws another 1-1 on the board, uh, the momentum might be too much to overcome with only two rounds to go after this. A couple other notes in the 450 class. Dylan Ferrandez returned last weekend. Expect him to be a little bit better. Tony Carroll. Oh, Mookie should be better. Dean Wilson, they didn't have great results, but we're hoping they get better. And Mookie, first race in eight yeah. Years, so yes. yeah. Yes. Mookie's first race since this race in 2014. So that's over eight years. Like you said, Dean was sidelined, so it's good to see those guys back. Yeah, and also uh, Mookie said after the race last week that they were training in the heat, and that was no advantage at Unadilla because it was like 70 degrees on the nose. Uh, so he was hoping it would be hot and humid here that would help those guys that train in Florida out. Uh, guess what? I think we got the humidity. Yeah, it's a little warm out today. There's a chance of rain tomorrow. We're kind of – the weather's predicament uh, yeah. or uh, prediction is changing a little bit, so we might see a little bit of rain. I don't know if it will be a full bone mutter, but at some point either in the morning or the afternoon we might see some rain. Yeah. So that could shake it up a little bit, you know, with guys – with different, you know, tire selection maybe or something like that or just goggles, just different things like that thrown into play. And like I said, that could, we could switch up, with the, especially in the 450 class. The points could be, you know, the morning could be different than the afternoon. It could be a completely different story. So I'm just going to vote right now. Mud races are usually exciting because it's a wild card, but I don't want wild card. I want these guys to stay close in the points all the way to the end. And speaking of wild card, Tony Crowley's back, everybody. Tony Crowley's back. We literally just saw him walking the racetrack. He knows his track. He was here uh, 15 years ago for Motocross the Nations. Crowley's back. He's on the Donations team for Italy, so going to get some motos in. That's wild. Yeah, it's, it'll be good to have him back. Just obviously another guy that can contend for, you know, top fives and stuff. I know he didn't have the best, I guess, last race before this at High Point with his knee and kind of going out that way. But like you said, a good. this is a good track. 
it should just be a good rate, good day of racing in both classes, you know, with everybody that's here. So. Yep. All right. We'll talk 250s in a moment, but uh, we're going to let Mitch and Tom, who's behind the camera, scour the pits and talk to some riders about the weekend. All right. Real quick timeout in the show. Uh, if you might remember back at Washougal, Roger, you got taken out in the first turn. I didn't know we'd say that anymore, but you got taken out at turn one at Washougal. Yeah. I was taken out by a flying Dutchman. Yeah, yes. <laughs> so that's right. So Lars von Berkel, you got into Roger on the motorcycle. Yeah, actually, I only found out when I was in the medical unit, I hit a legend. So um, out of all the thousands of people I could hit, I hit Roger. So um, yeah, that's special. But I found out later, I, I'm happy he's OK. I'm a bit banged up, so I cannot ride tomorrow. But I, I have a little gift for Roger. So. Oh. Hey, let's have a ceremonial presentation. Lars von Berkel has been doing great as a privateer, the Flying Dutchman. And uh, here we go. Look at that, Rog. Yeah, Turn great. That. I love red wine. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, there we go. Good job, Lars von Berkel, uh, making up with uh, Roger DeCoster. And, uh, and, and, and somehow Roger's okay. Oh, you were okay with that? Yeah. You got yeah. knocked down pretty good. Yeah, I did an uh, unintended backflip. <laughs> yeah. And he's still here. Hey, you earned that one. All right, back to the show. <laughs> all right, so how did you get this ride? Can you talk a little bit about how this happened? I mean, it, it all happened, like, really fast. It was, it was funny, actually. I was just uh, on a little holiday in uh, Spain, and they called me, yeah, just come test some days here with the guys. So I just uh, figured out some flights. That was Friday. Uh, Tuesday I was landing there in Tallahassee at the farm, and, yeah, actually I had... I was supposed to leave some days ago, but uh, things turned out really well, and I got the opportunity to race here, so I'm really happy for that. Looking forward to the races tomorrow. Yeah, and so you've been competing in the MXGP, the MX2, and the EMX class, right, on the KTM, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, I've been competing uh, like three or four GPs, and the last one in Lommel, I was in the EMX. So how big of a difference is that KTM bike to the bike that you're going to be racing here this weekend? I mean, it's a huge difference, uh, the brands, uh, the frame, everything, but... I can say uh, I'm really surprised with the Star bike. I mean, it's a, a really, really good bike, so yeah. And then is this just for this weekend, right? Or is there anything maybe for the future, or just for this weekend so far? Uh, we still don't know. Just uh, I go day by day. I'm enjoying the time here, so yeah. All right, we're here with Maryland local Justin Rodbell, man. How are you? Uh, what's your thoughts heading into this weekend? You excited? Yeah, man, it's been a great week. We've been out here in the heat having fun. Uh, you can't beat Bud's Creek, man. I love this track, love this place, love the town. I'm 30 minutes away. Rode the Honda Goldwing here this morning, so we're in the spirit, just having fun. And, uh, yeah, dude, hopefully we get a points as the goal this, obviously, for every weekend. But right now the field's deep, so if I get two top 20s, man, I'm pumped. Crack a cold one after and enjoy the day. I say, as you mentioned being in the heat, were you working the HVAC job this week too, or you mean like out here riding, or you mean like actually in the heat in an attic somewhere? So I rode this week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Him, my mechanic and I installed a floor, and then uh, no HVAC this week, but probably next week <laughs> and the week after. Yeah, I was gonna say. So what's uh, I guess where are you like you said you want to get points at deep. It feels really deep, and then in addition to a couple more guys. Like what's I guess where are you thinking out your seasons at so far? You know, obviously to this point, and where are you looking to I guess finish strong the rest of the last couple rounds? Yeah, um, I've been you know bouncing around from anywhere from 15th to 20th. I feel like every weekend. Um, last weekend I was like battling with Mookie. For, he fell twice, so like you know <laughs> battling whatever. But that was cool for me, and I saw it back at Dino's jersey the whole time. So. Uh, yeah, who knows if I can? We made some gearing changes. If I can get a start, who knows what can happen? But uh, points is a goal, man, and we're just having fun with it. Let's keep it loose and fun. And a reminder: this show brought to you by 60 Helmets, dedicated to the relentless pursuit of brain protection. 60's patented omnidirectional suspension technology provides protection capabilities unmatched by any other helmet design. Established in 2011, 60 is the technology leader in both motorcycle and bicycle helmet design. All right, thanks for the time for those riders there. We actually are shooting these interviews after we shot this, so Mitch doesn't even know who he's going to end up talking to later. It's like a time-space warp continuum. Let's talk 250s here. Uh, Nick Romano in the news. Um, Nick Romano last week, it was his home race at Unadilla. He never raced at that track before because amateurs aren't allowed, and he's battling Jet Lawrence. I think like four times Lawrence had the pass on him. Romano wouldn't let it happen, and then finally Jet does get by and crashes. Here's the theory of a couple veterans. Grant Langston on the Whiskey Throttle Show, and then James Stewart in a conference call we had this week for TV, because Stu's on TV. 
They're like, uh, Jet was getting frustrated. It's like, I need to go. And then he tried too hard to blow by, and that led to a series of crashes. But what we saw, Mitch, indisputably, okay, there's a bike problem for Jet at Red Bud. Points-wise, it was bad, but he rode awesome there. Unadilla was the first bad race that we saw from Jet this year. Yeah, we just, like you said, just the mistakes that really is uncharacteristic, yeah. and maybe it's because he was battling. Maybe it's just he wasn't gelling with the track, but just something was kind of off. But then he said afterwards, like, hey, guys, at least hope you enjoyed the crashes. I, like, I hope it provided some entertainment. So he's trying to stay positive. Like you said, it wasn't. It wasn't a great day, but he didn't. It wasn't the horrible day that cost him a big chunk of change, uh, big chunk of championship change. So really, yeah, he's he's walking away from it healthy and everything, so it's fine. So, but not walking away healthy is Romano himself. So he has a good job at Unadilla the home race, and then he hurt his thumb this week, uh, and now we hear he might be done, might be done, done, might not see Romano back this year. Yes. I don't know. Yeah. So yeah. Star put out a press release, I guess, on Tuesday, I believe it was. He's yeah. practicing down at the facility, and he fell over and you know, jammed his thumb up and tore some ligaments. He has to have surgery. So the press release was kind of made it sound like he might be racing next weekend, but he put on his personal Instagram, hey, I'm having surgery. I'm done for the year. Like looking forward to Supercross next year. And they were kind of like, okay, so uh, I guess they signed a Spanish Guillaume Ferris, we believe his name is pronounced. Good job. I apologize if that's not perfect, but a yeah. uh, young kid, I think he was a Spanish uh, gas gas rider a couple years ago, kind of like coming up through 125, two stroke ranks. And he was in the MX uh, 250 class this year and then did a little bit of 250 or uh, yeah, MX2 MX2, class. Yep. And I think I like top 15 overall in the MX2 of Turkey, MXGP of Turkey a couple weeks ago. So pretty solid result. But like I said, this is going to be his US debut 109 on a Yamaha. So it's going to be, everybody might be like, hey, who's this kid? But yeah, like I said, we don't know a ton about him, but we're going to hopefully talk to him here in yep. a little bit and learn a bit about him. And then like I said, see him ride tomorrow. So it should be fun. He's actually been named to the Spanish uh, Donations team uh, as well. And in the press release there, the team said, He's looking forward to big announcements about his future. So I don't know if this means a, a ride with Star in the future. You know, a lot of people are trying to claim that bike. So good job by him for getting that machine. And by the way, this team has had like 49 riders through the years, and they still have to find replacements because uh, Kitchen's out, not to break your heart. I know you're a Kitchen guy. LeBlanc's got the collarbone. Now Romano's out. Nichols never came back, and he announced that he's already split waves with the team. But one man is not hurt. He's coming on strong late. We must talk about Justin Cooper. We're finally seeing 2021 Justin Cooper right here at the end of 2022. Yeah, I remember last year at Unadilla, it's again his home race. He had a really great ride. I think it was first moto. Yeah. And then the second moto, the things didn't work out. Jet ended up winning. And then we kind of found out, you know, months afterwards that he had that thumb issue. Yeah. But he was strong. But then this year, man, if he didn't have that one mistake in the first moto again, he could have won 1-1 easily. And, you know, he was dominant in the second moto. Again, his home track got good starts. Like he, he just, like you said, looked like he usually does. He gets those starts. He's charging and he kind of not necessarily checks out huge, but he just gets a, you know, he gets away and then he kind of just manages it and smart and yeah. just kind of efficient riding. He's not like really super wild when he rides. He just holds the throttle wide open and just, like I said, he's just usually like cautious, I guess. Yeah, there's nothing about the Justin Cooper riding that stands out that makes you say, oh my God, he's going so fast. And then you look at the stopwatch, especially in qualifying, and you're like, okay, he is going that fast. And by the way, last year in the first moto, I think he put like five seconds on everybody in two laps, fell, and then put five seconds on him again. So if he's rolling, he's going to be good here, uh, which leads us to the conversation of Motocross the Nations. Uh, allegedly, they're going to announce the team tomorrow, and it's really down to two guys. We know Sexton and Tomac are going to be on the team. Will it be Christian Craig? Will it be Justin Cooper? They could have announced the team at Unadilla. I believe they held it to try to give a little more time for Cooper to show what he's got. He wins the moto at Unadilla. I think it's looking good in the Justin Cooper camp, but I guess we don't know for sure until tomorrow. We'll see. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're going to announce it right tomorrow, right before the first motos of the day, right? So, yeah. But, yeah, I think either way, it's going to be a good pick. You know, they're going to give their best. They're both going to be on the really the same equipment. It's going to be a star 250. Right. And they're, you know, they're both going to give it their all. It would be cool to see Justin Cooper kind of get the redemption. He had that bad luck, and he won the qualifying moto the first time he was there, and then he kind of crashed and hurt his hand, and him and Anderson got together a little bit. And yeah. So he, it'd be cool to see him get that redemption story, and like you said, kind of after missing Supercross with his foot injury and everything. But also, Craig, he's an older veteran guy, maybe – this would be a cool thing for him to say, hey, I checked it off, you know, got the Supercross title in the 250 West class. Right. It'd be cool. Like I said, I think either way, I think it's going to be a good rider and they're going to go give it their all. But, yeah, I guess we'll, we'll finally see tomorrow who it's going to be. So That's right. And uh, one more name to mention at the very end of the show, the guy who won the last race, Joe Shimoda. Two wins this year. First of all, your heart goes out to Hunter Lawrence. Uh, let's see. He was leading the second moto, could have won the overall at Millville. Red flag, restart, bad start. Uh, he was up front at Washougal, crashed in the second moto with the overall in his hands. He had the overall in his hands last weekend, and then he thought he had a bike problem. That's three in a row. The Hunter coulda, shoulda, woulda won. That was like a coulda, a shoulda, and a woulda in three races. 
But you can't take anything from Joe. Joe's been just flat out great this summer. Yeah, and we've seen him charge through the pack. Like, that's kind of his thing was not good, good starts, but he was able to somehow get into the top 10. And then all of a sudden, it, you know, the last couple races, it was getting into the top five. And then whenever everybody has the mistakes, he kind of capitalizes and jumped on that moto win at Red Bud when Jet's bike had the issues. And then, uh, like you said, when Cooper had that fall at New York. Yep. So he jumped at those. But yeah, his starts have been tremendously better. Yeah. So instead of having to work his way up to the finish, he's kind of already starting there. And then he can kind of pull away or make some passes like him and McAdoo were battling to the death and stuff but yeah his starts have been so much better but like i said his something just been working with nick way he's just he's looked a lot better more confident and i think that's the thing i talked to him about a year or so ago was he just looks to qualify better to get his day going better yeah. and then it just gets the ball rolling and you can see now everything's starting to click like you said moto wins overall wins he's still only the other guy or he's still only the guy not named jet lawrence to get an overall win this that's year right. like you said hunter hasn't got one justin cooper hasn't got one yeah. and joe shimoda has two so really he's been awesome this year like since everything's clicked finally qualifying starts he almost whole shot a couple races now. Moto wins, everything's clicking. He looks, he looks awesome. Yeah, we have a real star in our hands, and he was also introduced as a member of uh, Team Japan for the donations. Although the press release called him Shimoda Joe, which I actually think sounds cooler than Joe Shimoda. So, just own it. Okay, that's 6D bringing you the first look here from Bud's Creek. Watch our action tomorrow, and like I mentioned, James Stewart will be in the television booth with me for Mav TV and Mav TV on Flow Racing. He's here. It's going to be awesome. Bubba Scrub here. Yes, that's right. A uh, big celebration of the Bubba Scrub uh, was debuted here in 2003, so that's actually 20 seasons, if you put it that way. Over there, uh, Bubba Scrub changed the sport. Like, literally, watch, I'll give you an example. Go to Carson Brown's Instagram, Carson Brown 910 and watch him do scrubs on bikes from the 80s that were not designed for scrubs, but Carson Brown and every pro knows how to scrub now because of James Stewart at this race 20 years ago. We'll talk to James about that tomorrow. Mitch, good job, buddy. All right, got the reporter's notebook, the fanny pack, the camera. He's a true reporter. I just talk. We'll see you on Saturday.